Hello guys, welcome to Salesforce Predator. In this channel, we discuss about various concepts and technologies in Salesforce. This video is part of Lightning Web Component series. If you want to watch other videos of Lightning Web Component or any other concepts in Salesforce, do visit our channel. Today, we are going to discuss about file structure in Lightning Web Component. What we will do is, we'll discuss the concept and do the demo side by side. Okay? So let us go to our VS code. For this, first we need to create a project. So we'll use the shortcut keys, Control Shift P to create a project in our VS code. We'll select a standard project template. We'll name it as first project okay we'll store it over here right so we have created our first video project now we need to create our lightning web component so again we'll use shortcut keys control shift P to create lightning web component. We'll name it as first video. Press enter key, select the directory. Yes, so we have created our first lightning web component. If you can see, along with the lightning web component, three files are also created. First is an HTML file, second is a JavaScript file, and another one is an XML file. Apart from these files, there are also other files in a Lightning Web component. So we can also create a CSS file, an SVG file, and another JavaScript file. We'll discuss these files one by one. So let's go to our VS Code. Okay. So this is an HTML file. Every UI component must have an HTML file with the root tag template. So if you want to have any UI element like buttons or paragraph, we need to place inside these template tags, right? So suppose I need to have a para, I'll write it as to Salesforce predator. And again, we'll have a heading tag, h1. predator world right so anything that has to be displayed in UI has to be put inside this template tag and when this particular component renders in browser this template tag is replaced by the name of HTML file the HTML file follows a naming convention of component name dot HTML so in our case, the component name is first video. So the HTML file name will be first video dot HTML. Next is a JavaScript file. JavaScript file also follows a naming convention of component name dot JS. So in our case, it would be first video dot JS. It comes with two statements which are already present in it. So first is import lightning element from LWC. Here, LWC is nothing but a module which contains independent and reusable codes. Lightning element is a custom wrapper class of a standard HTML element. If you will hover over this lightning element, you will be able to see the description of it. It's a base class for lightning web component JavaScript class. Next statement is export default class first video which extends lightning element. Right, so what we do, we are doing over here is, first we import lightning element from LWC module, and then we extend that particular lightning element by creating our first video class. One thing to keep in mind is, the class name will be a Pascal class. That is, the first letter of each word will be capitalized, right? And by using this export keyword, we can export our class so that other Lightning Web components can use it, right? 
so how they are going to use it so they need to include a particular statement similar to this one right so it will be like import first video from c slash first video right so suppose a particular component wants to import our class they have to use this particular statement in their javascript file right next is a configuration file the configuration file defines the metadata values for the component for example the design configurations for lightning app builder or a community builder so if you want to use your component inside the app page record page home page or community then you need to specify those configuration here inside the meta file the configuration file follows a naming convention of component name dot js dash meta dot xml right so uh, inside this configuration file this api version parameter is nothing but it binds the component the lightning web component to the salesforce api version right next is the is exposed parameter so this is exposed parameter decides whether the component is accessible inside a lightning app builder or community builder so if it is false it is not accessible and uh, to allow the component to be used in lightning app builder or community builder we have to set this is exposed as true so we are setting it as true next is suppose i want to use this uh, this lightning web component uh, inside a record page so what i'll do is i'll specify the targets for this lightning web component right so i'll use targets parameter and inside this targets i'll specify one particular target We'll specify the parameter as lightning record page right and yeah it has to be double underscore okay so we need to keep this in mind as well right we'll save this configuration file we'll save this javascript file and we'll save this html file right now let's check whether we can display the changes into the browser so we have made certain changes we have added h1 and p tag over here then we have added a target also in our configuration file let's see if we can display this in the web browser or not so for that first we need to authorize an org so we'll use default login url and we'll name it as predator org okay so it will redirect us to a login url we'll select particular uh, credentials So authorized or run successfully right so we are able to authorize an org now what we'll do is we'll push our code into salesforce org till then what we can do is we can create an aura application inside which will include our lightning web component right so suppose this is our developer console file new lightning application demo. right yeah 
deploy source to org run fail why because the target must end with the delimiter okay so we have made certain error over here. yes so it has to be target right now we'll save it and again deploy this to our org let's check if we can do it successfully or not till then we'll include our lightning web component inside our application so that we can demo it in our web browser okay has to be lightning record page <laughs> yeah so we are able to successfully deploy our lightning web computer inside our org let's check if we can save this now yes, we are able to save this now let's preview it So we are able to display whatever changes we have done in our HTML file, right? Also, apart from these three files, we can add a CSS file to our Lightning Web component. Suppose we want to apply certain CSS to this paragraph or this H1 tag. So what we'll do is we'll just create a new file and name it as first video dot CSS right yes and then we'll apply CSS to our h1 tag right this is h1 tag right so it has to be color suppose we change the color of h1 tag to red right We'll save this and we'll again deploy the changes made to org. One thing to be noted over here is the name of CSS file must be having a similar name as that of a folder, right? So we are able to deploy this to our org and we'll refresh this application yes so we are able to change the color of uh, our h1 tag right so this is how we can add a CSS file also in our lightning web component Next. now since we have added a parameter of lightning record page inside a configuration file let's check how we can add our lightning web component inside a record page so we'll go to our Salesforce org and inside that we'll select one of the contacts so that we can add our lightning web component inside its record page we'll edit this page so that we will be redirected to lightning app builder we'll check our component yeah so first video component is there what we'll do is we'll add it over here okay let's add it twice has been added already so yeah so we have added our lightning web component inside contact record page we'll save the changes and okay so we'll go back to the contact record page as you can see since we have added lightning web component inside this contact record page we are able to see it right our text which we added in a HTML file we can also create SVG file in our lightning web component. So what we'll do is we'll just create a new file. And one thing is to be kept in mind is that the name of each and every file in this lightning web component must match the name of folder, right? So it has to be first video dot SVG, right? Inside this SVG file, we'll in include the custom icons which we are going to use in our lightning web component 
Apart from these files, we can also have an additional JavaScript file in our Lightning Web component. So every component do have its own JavaScript file, like first video.js in our web component, but you can also include some additional JavaScript files in your Lightning Web component folder. So you can do this by creating a new file, name it as shared file dot js right these files are generally used for sharing particular code snippets with other lightning web components or uh, also for including some external javascript files we are going to learn more about this when we'll use pubsub model for communication between lightning web components so guys this is it for folder structure and lightning web components do let me know your suggestions and views in comment section also subscribe to our channel for more videos on lightning web components thank you